Okay, so this is how we're going to do the bioinformatics. So first, or the easiest thing to do, is start by going to BLAST. Just Google BLAST. Basic local alignment search tool. So from there, I want to click on human, because we're dealing with human. And from there, you want to insert your primer sequence here. Okay, so these are your primer sequences from your lab booklet. So we're just going to copy the first or forward primer. Make sure you don't copy a space. That will really confuse it. So just copy the letters. So copy. Paste that into the box. And just making sure everything is all OK. Click on Blast. Whilst that's thinking, it will maybe take half a minute or a minute to come back. Open up a new window. Repeat the process. So human again. And put the other prime sequence in there. Not that window. And click Blast again. So what this is going to do is search for this primer sequence throughout the entire human genome. Okay, so that one's still, that's the second primer. That's now found a nice hit. The first one has also found the hit. So this is a forward primer. We can scroll down and we can see that the top two hits, which is those two blue lines, which are 100% match, are the top two here, 100% match. And if we click on that, it should tell us a little bit about that sequence, or it'll tell us where it matches. And so all I did is clicked on that bit there, and it tells us it's Homo sapiens chromosome 7, and it's telling us here that it's in the serine threonine protein kinase BRAF gene, which is the correct gene. That's the gene that we're after. Okay, so that's reassuring. The primer, the four primer matches BRAF. If we have a look at the reverse primer, again, I think it's bringing up the same thing. Okay, so there we go, serine threonine protein kinase BRAF gene. Now, if you look at these two views, okay, there's your forward primer. Look at this number, 140,387,489. That is the position of the primer on chromosome 7. It's a big chromosome. If you look at this one, 140 thousand three hundred and eighty seven thousand two hundred and sixty six so the difference between there and there should be around 220 or so base pairs and it is okay so that's reassuring that tells us that the PCR product is amplifying a piece of DNA giving us 223 base pairs okay so we've got that basic information that matches the gel that I've already sent out to you. That's the size of the PCR product. So next step. Um, so we've done the first paragraph on page one where it says or select gene from the pull down list. We're going to go to the BRAF gene. So this is on page one, A or B. We're going to do B. So what we can do, open up a new window. W w dot ncbi dot nlm dot nih dot gov okay and from here we can go to gene and search for our gene which is b raf Okay, and we're dealing with human. So there we go. All of these are other weird and wonderful 
species. Let's click on BRAF. So this is going to give us some genomic information about that gene. And then it says scroll down to genomic regions and transcripts. That's here. And then we are looking for some files. So we're looking for some files that are stored under reference sequences. So on my instructions it says click on reference sequences and it's this one here reference sequence details so you click on there and this these are all different files associated with BRAF this one NG7873.3 okay it's been updated since I did this uh, instruction but that is the genomic sequence that's the DNA sequence okay so we can click on there and click on the one that says faster that's just a, a way of displaying the DNA sequence and we will get a big long sequence that goes on for pages and pages so somewhere within the sequence are the primers and we want to be able to locate where they are because if we can find the forward and reverse we can find out the size of the PCR product so easy little trick press Control F and then put in the primer sequence so I'll go forward primer paste it into there okay there we've got it so that is the forward primer now whenever you're doing primers one's going to be forward one's going to be reverse one's going to be anti reverse antisense so just to find the the other primer we need um, this information and it's so the primer sequence is this if I paste that into the box it won't find it because we're going to be we're looking for the reverse antisense of that not the sense okay so what I'm going to do now is type in the sequence backwards whilst reversing every base so see if I read the sequence backwards it goes a g g t g a c t a a and so on so I'm going to reverse every base so now it goes t c c a c T G A T T A A A T T T T T G G C C. Okay, so that's found the reverse primer, which is very reassuring. Now, somewhere on this page should be the forward primer, which we previously found. So, what I'm just going to do is copy a whole bunch of DNA from here down to here. So I've got at least a few hundred bases and I copy out that sequence and I actually do this in in Word. So I'm going to create a new file and just dump it into Microsoft Word and that is your DNA sequence. Okay, just to make sure we've got the sequence we want, I'll do Control Find again, type in the forward primer, which can be found here. I'll just copy that or well, sometimes it's easier just to type in half the sequence just in case it straddles a line but there you go so the whole sequence that we're after is somewhere around here So it starts TCA and goes through you know, the GAT, AG, A, G, A. So that is your forward primer. So let's make it highlighted and make it yellow. We then need to do the search for the reverse primer. So it's again typing in the sequence backwards and antisense T, C, C, A, 
C T G okay so we're getting a hit here and if I continue this sequence along right to the very end there should be a run of 3 A's, 5 T's, G, G, C, C. So that sequence is the reverse primer. So let's give it a different color. There you go. Okay, so far so good. Okay, so all we need to do now is we can copy out this sequence. And that should be the sequence of your PCR product. So I'm just going to do a little backspace to make sure everything is lined up with no silly little spaces. Okay, and if we measure that on the word count, it says it's 224 bases. Okay, that's near enough. Should be about 223. Maybe I've got an extra space in there. Okay, I've still got space there. So that's the correct side. That is our correct PCR product. Okay, now what we can do is copy this sequence. Make sure you don't get any spaces in there. So we can copy that. And we can open up a new window. Just Google Restriction Mapper. There are lots of these on the internet. I use restrictionmapper.org. And paste your sequence in there and map sites. Okay, now what this has done is looked for all of the possible restriction sites and it's found the enzyme that we used, which is TSP R1, and it cuts at position 124 and 211. And this is a sequence that it cuts, so C A S T G. You might want to have a look at what an S is because it's not a normal base, it means it's a choice of two possibles. So we click on the enzyme here. It'll tell us a little bit about the enzyme. It's thermophilic. Uh, it is. It cuts this sequence, so NN, that could be anything, C-A-S-T-G, N-N, and it cuts here, and then it, it doesn't cut the enzyme blunt-ended. It cuts it with a big, long, single-stranded overhang. You might have to have a think about that when you're looking at your gels and thinking about how the bands have run. Here we've, we've not got double-stranded DNA at the cut site. We have a region of single-stranded DNA. So that's how it cuts. And that's how it's written, C-A-S-T-G. So we're going to be looking in the sequence for C-A-S-T-G. Okay, so all I've just pulled up here is um, the sort of universal DNA code. You've got your A's, your G's, your C's and your T's. But we've also got these other letters, R, Y, S, W. And S just means that a sequence can be either G or C. So within our restriction mapper output, we had a S. So that means it can be either a C or a G and the enzyme still recognizes it. So that's really important information to know because we've got to locate this sequence in our sequence. So Let's go back to our sequence and we're looking for C A I'll just type it out C A S T G. So that could be C A G T G or C A C T G. Okay, so the question is where does it reside in this sequence? So let's just do control using the control F function again, which is what that box is, C a G T G okay so there's one right in the middle of your PCR product so let's highlight that I don't know let's make it purple or something okay that's one cut site of the enzyme the other one didn't come up there so let's try C A C T G Okay, and it's there. It's actually within your primer. So, there is cut site number two. And there is cut site number one. 